Helis and Emily and Charlotte from Lomography contacted me about a month ago and asked if I was interested in reviewing their forthcoming new film camera. Now, I wasn't initially that excited about it. I mean, this is not a gear review channel after all. But the ladies were really convincing and, and nice, so I eventually said, yeah, why not? And I did the paperwork. And then I noticed that it's gonna be a 110 format camera. So I was even less enthusiastic. I mean, I like bigger formats, the bigger the better. And this is really going to be a tiny camera. So after a few days, the camera arrived and it's actually pretty neat. It's Lomomatic 110. You've probably already seen a lot of reviews online about this. I'm late to the game uh, and I'll explain to you why. Um, uh, this is, this is uh, small, it fits into your jeans pocket or whatever pockets you might have. Um, it has a few simple controls. Distance is estimated 0 0.8 meters to infinity. Then you set the ISO 100 to 400 and then there's a bulb mode. Uh, you can take multiple exposures and, and then there is a very rudimentary aperture setting. The lens is um, 23mm f2.8 and there's a night and day mode. In the night mode it's fully open but then in the day mode it's f5.6 so you can get a little bit sharper images maybe. 110 format means that it's really easy to use. Um, the film comes in these kind of little cartridges and you just drop it in, close the lid and you are ready to go. Kodak developed this format in the 70s really with the goal to make photography as simple as possible. And if you let somebody else to develop and scan your film, I don't think it can be any simpler than this. So that's that's clearly the plus of this of this camera. It's really easy to use. I also like the selection of these settings. More would have been an overkill. Then they sell separately a flash unit, small box, that you can attach to the end of this camera with this little screw. And it doesn't really change that camera so much. So, but now you get a flash. I put some black and white film into it and went to the local park to shoot some winter landscape in black and white. That's what I do. Then looking at those pictures, uh, it was clear to me that that's not enough for a review. I need to do more. So I went and bought myself and my wife tickets to Mexico.
Now, uh, in Mexico, I had three different kind of films with me, two color films and black and white. Uh, Lomography is the only company who makes these films nowadays. I don't mind. I mean, it's, there's a nice selection of film, but I said only from Lomography. Now, uh, while I was aimlessly shooting with this camera on the streets of, of Mexico City, my wife asked me that, hey, now since you are working so hard, um, is Lomography paying us? Are they compensating the trip to Mexico and how our hotel accommodation and all the expenses? And I said, yeah, that's my understanding. I mean, I signed the contract, so I expect them to fully pay all the expenses. So we bought more tickets and we flew to the coast and, and I took more pictures. Okay, so then after all these rolls of, of images, I finally started to have an opinion on, of this camera. And like in all the good reviews, I made myself a pros and cons list, the back of an envelope. My pros list is pretty short, but this cons list is much longer. So I thought, let's go through my findings. First, the pros, <laughs> what I like about this camera. Uh, obviously, the size. It's very handy, neat. Um, I like the settings, the collection of settings here. Like, as I said, not too much, not too little. It actually follows pretty much my favorite tourist camera settings. My favorite tourist camera is an other Lomo product, this Lomo LCA 120, and it has the same distance settings and, and pretty much the same automation. So, I like the settings. Then there was an additional benefit that I didn't see coming. Now, I hate when the horizon is tilted, when it's not straight. And if you take pictures with this camera like that, it is so long that you automatically get the horizon straight. It sort of almost straight, straightens itself. <laughs> Automatic leveling function, which is pretty cool. Nice size, perfect settings, automatic horizon leveling. But then what are the cons? Okay, um, first of all, this camera probably has the worst shutter release feeling of any cameras. It makes a gazillion of clicks and cracks and, and you don't know when it actually takes the pitch. Let me, I don't know if you can hear this, but... And it doesn't seem to affect the final picture, but I'm always a little bit like, did I really take the picture or did I just squeeze the camera? <laughs> so I don't like the feeling of it. Then I'm not exactly sure how to hold this camera. I mean, if you take the uh, horizontal picture like that, that is pretty clear. But then if you take vertical pictures like that, you know, you easily put your hand in front of the uh, flash or then in front of your uh, taking lens and, 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 and it's really, I never really learned to use it like this, which is a pity because I'd like to take 
mostly pictures like this. Maybe it's just me, maybe I would get used to it eventually, but I found it a bit complicated. Uh, this flash attachment feels a bit fragile. That's the third thing that worries me. Um, I, I think it's eventually going to break. So this is a prototype, so maybe they get it sturdier in the final product, but it's a bit loose feeling. Then the lens. I mean, it's um, f2.8, which is pretty nice, but it, I wish it was larger. You know, larger form, larger lens. Like now it feels pretty much like a normal lens and wider would have been nicer for this kind of a tourist pitch, tourist camera. Yeah. Uh, then uh, also this lens produces pretty nasty flare if you shoot directly at the sun, which I do pretty often. Uh, the Lens and the focusing lens or focusing hole, they are pretty far away from each other. So that means that you get a parallax error, especially if you take close-up pictures, then it becomes pretty noticeable. And I lost quite a many heads in my portrait pictures when I didn't really take that into account. So that was a pity. Then the last image problem, if you, if you have um, taken all your pictures and then you move it to the beyond the last image, like you end the roll, then you can't close this camera anymore. You gotta take the film out and put it somewhere else. I wish I could just keep the finalized roll inside of this camera as long as I need or as long as I put the new film in. But for some reason, when it's in the end, I can't close this camera anymore. I don't know why they make that kind of a design decision. And then last but not least on my cons list, um, it doesn't take very good pictures. And that's a pity. Okay, so let's admit it. I'm not an expert of this format, 110. So after my initial disappointment about the image quality, I thought, let me dig a bit deeper. Why is it that the images are what they are? And I started to narrow it down a bit. I think it can be the film quality. I mean, these are Lomography films, so I don't know what they are. It may be uh, that the camera is bad. It may be that I developed, because I developed them myself somehow wrongly. Or it may be just the image size. So I started to narrow it down. First, uh, I had made a new batch of Tetanol C41 liquids. And then at the same time I developed these, I developed also some other images. So now I could compare. Uh, by the way, when you develop 110 film, first of all, um, you know, as the film is ended, you know, there's, there's a packing paper that you can see and, and you can lift the packing paper, with the, you know, tip of your pen or something and then you can start to pull the packing paper out and eventually you get the film you start to show here then you need to go to the dark room and then you can pull the film out and put it on the spiral and I have this kind of a Johnson Universal developer tank I don't know where I got it this is a not a very good tank it leaks and whatnot but there's one extra benefit you know you can develop 110 film. It's the uh, same as the 16 millimeter film. So um, I put this film on the spool and developed it like all the other color films I develop. But now if I compare my images that I got with my Lomomatic 110 
to the images that I got with my Lomo LCA 120 medium format camera on Kodak Gold 200. Um, the contrast is staggering and I know this is not a fair comparison. I mean much larger image size and all that. But hey life is not fair. To me these are both tourist cameras and to me this is a fair comparison and this is how they compare. Hey, then I thought, what if the problem is the scanning? I first try to scan the film using my Epson V850 flatbed scanner. Now, I don't have the film holders for that scanner and 110 film. I don't even know if they exist. And that's actually one challenge with this film size is that there are less all kind of gadgets and goodies to manage these films available. Also, not everybody develops, not every print, you know, developer shops develop this film. So, anyways, I tried to scan these with my flatbed uh, scanner and the results were really bad. And then I remember that, actually my experience is that the smaller is the negative size, the better is the camera scanning option. And I had a, I have a Valoi, 360 system, but I didn't have an adapter for 110 film. But Valoi has one, so I drove to camerastore.com, that is locally here in my hometown, and Paulina made me one 110, you know, adapter for my Valoi system. I scanned with it, and the results were much better. So scanning definitely has a huge impact on you know how these turn out to be. Camera scanning is obviously the way to go. So not the scanning, not the development, not even necessarily the film because what I used here was Kodak Gold 200 which is one of the cheapest color films available and so much better. So then could it be the camera? And I throw back to the camera store and I lo got a loaner. This is a Pentax uh, Auto 110 SLR camera with interchangeable lenses and whatnot. This is really the Toyota Camry or Mercedes-Benz of these small 110 cameras. And, and it really is an SLR camera that you focus through the lens and these lenses are supposed to be really good. I wanted to see that. What if I shoot with this camera? Am I getting any better pictures? And I took pictures like this. And as you can see, they are no better than with my Lomomatic 110. So the camera is as good as the best possible camera. So then the, the final conclusion is that really this film size you know, such a small strip takes 24 images. This is simply so small that all the grain and all the dirt and all those things get amplified. And it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. That's the characteristics of 110 format. You get bad images. 
I was a bit disappointed. I took a few days break and then I thought I gotta finish this review. I'd like to say only good things. But uh, then I actually found a silver lining. So let's first think about who is the target audience for this camera. If I look at the example pictures provided by Lamography, I'll, I think that it's 20-something teenagers who want to get to their first film camera and start to experiment with this format. I mean, the images are, you know, teenagers in awkward social situations or, you know, mouth open or funny poses and whatnot. Not really my cup of tea, but um, if you are into that and if you are in that target market, um, chances are you don't want those good images. You can take perfect images with your iPhone and that's not really what this is supposed to compete with. Now you want to start to shoot with the film camera just because it looks different. It has this film look. And this certainly has that to the to the extreme. So for that target market this really is an option if you really really want to emphasize the small size and easy operation. However, for most of you, I would probably recommend just a point and shoot 35mm camera or maybe a half frame camera. It's not that much bigger and then you'd have much more flexibility and even better images. But then, what if you are not in a target audience? What if you are somebody like me who owns 50 cameras? Or what if you have lost your inspiration in photography? What if you spent your days perfecting your pictures in a Photoshop, getting each and every pixel right, and you are a bit tired of that? Then maybe this could unleash your creativity. It forces you to work differently. It forces you to think about different values and different aspects of your photos than pixel-perfect quality. It makes you work actually harder if you are a good photographer. And that's that actually may be a good thing. So my recommendation is that go and get yourself the, not this silver one because this is a bit boring, but get the colored one. It looks really funky. Leave the flash out, take the cheapest version and go and have fun. I mean, so in the end of the day, well done Lamography. This is actually a pretty interesting camera and even though it doesn't take very good pictures, it can still be a lot of fun and a really creative tool. So hey, listen. Uh, thanks for sending it to me. I'll send you my invoices about these flight tickets, my hotel accommodation. We also ate pretty well in nice places and I rented a car and whatnot. So expect to get that invoice fairly soon. No rush. You got a week or two. For everybody else, thanks for watching. Next time something else.